uh, uh, the introduction of the uh, six distinguished uh, panelists here uh, in this session. As you know, uh, all of them are very distinguished and very uh, well-known uh, uh, experts uh, or leading thinkers uh, in, in this area. Uh, in the, our questions, as uh, a questions to impose on us as a mission to answer, uh, in, it's, re it's also written uh, in our uh, agenda. Uh, that is how to leverage the uh, advancement in technology like uh, uh, larger spread of mobile telephone, uh, artificial intelligence, and so on. Uh, it's uh, in expanding uh, services trade between countries, and what are additional regulatory firewalls and uh, preparedness uh, 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 required for are uh, required to protect the domestic consumer, especially data protection and access and related aspects. And the third question: What are the promising services sectors and subsectors for broad-based engagement in services trade in Asia Pacific region? And the final question: is How to deal with the new disciplines in services trade, such as negative list approach, uh, uh, mutual recognition, data pro privacy, state-owned enterprises, domestic regulations, and so on. So uh, uh, first, our first speaker is uh, Professor uh, Chung Yong Ang uh, from uh, Korea. Please, you have five minutes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you know, it is increasingly clear that that the promotion of the service trade in the Asia Pacific region would provide a new growth outlet for needed trade expansion and the job creation against uh, growth inhibiting protectionism. <clears throat> the service sector liberalization is likely to reinforce both market driven cross border supply chain and the trade in services and goods as well as uh, the enhancing manufacturing and overall economic efficiency. Well, as the TPP 11 is going to be effective on December 30 this year, the RCEP needs to be concluded uh, as early as possible to exert trade and investment liberalization and facilitation in parallel with the TPP 11 in the Asia Pacific well, the trade liberalization measures for the service trade contained in the TPP 11 is regarded much higher and advanced than those being negotiated on the RCEP. Uh, so while speeding up the RCEP negotiation, the service liberalization clauses in the RCEP need to be upgraded as much as possible on the impact of the Industry 4.0 on the service trade liberalization, there exists a substantial technological gaps between advanced digital economies and uh, developing digital latecomers. Uh, the better and well-coordinated service trade policies can stimulate inclusive growth by promoting access to information, skill, technology, especially for SMEs. Given the serious digital divide among Asia-Pacific economies, we need to create an international cooperation mechanism for digital capacity building for the digital latecomers to ensure the meaningful service sector liberalization. <clears throat> Beginning in the February 2012, 50 advanced countries began negotiating the Trade in Service Agreement, TISA, for further liberalization of key subsectors, including financial services, healthcare, and transportation. The, this discipline might serve the profit interest of the private and foreign corporations of advanced digital economies. Given the trade uncertainty, the TISA is not likely to progress as observed since uh, early 2016. There need to be a balance between public interest of host economies and the profit-making interest of the private and foreign companies on the developing di digital di the economies. 
rules on regulations on the foreign direct investment need to be harmonized across nations to take full advantage of ongoing regional value chains. However, the adoption of negative list system for foreign direct in investment inducement across nations would be very difficult for digital latecomers to accept, especially the flows of international hedge funds, especially through hostile M&As, which are looking for short-term profit needs to be carefully monitored. Another concern is the increasing number of investor state disputes in order to mitigate ISD cases, a post-investment aftercare services are important. Korean case has some benchmarking story. Now, the internet of trust is under great challenge. Digital authoritarianism is still going on. In fact, global internet freedom has declined in the past eight consecutive years. The trends need to be reversed. It is great that ASEAN countries agree to facilitate cross-border e-commerce transi transactions within the region. I would like to suggest that cohesiveness of ASEAN could be expanded to existing ASEAN plus one or more FTAs in a win-win framework of service uh, liberalization. The Model 4 General Agreement of Trade and Service is the most regulated the more professional skills and training are involved in the cross-border movement of natural persons, the less likely to adopt mutual recognition system. We might start some easy ones, such as translator services for tourism. On the most promising service sectors for common development in the Asia Pacific, I would like to suggest tourism and e-commerce could be prioritized because there exists the relative less water between liberalization and the concessions allowed by domestic laws and the binding clauses of international agreement. Expansion of the intra-regional open sky agreement for low cost carriers to fly rather freely in the Asia Pacific would provide a new momentum for regional tourism development. Data privacy and information security is another important issue. The European Union's general data protection regulations should maintain a balance between privacy and economic competitiveness. In conclusion, making the most out of the digital transformation for trade in goods and services require openness more holistically and thinking about measures affecting goods, services, and digital connectivity more jointly, and about measures affecting the full value chain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor An, uh, for your very comprehensive uh, presentation uh, in responding to all the questions uh, uh, to be covered by this session. Uh, so the next speaker is uh, Professor Day from India, please. You have five minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, can I have the slides? Right. I will be uh, basically doing two things. One is uh, in the last uh, ASEAN-India summit in Singapore, in the last week, uh, uh, Prime Minister um, Indonesia, he declared that Indonesia ratified the services and investment agreement uh, of India, which was pending with Indonesia. Uh, with that, uh, ASEAN India services agreement have been now, has been now ratified by all the member states. And it is uh, now uh, uh, the, 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 the practitioners, the government, uh, to take a time and implement it. So what I will do, uh, I will share some information about services and investment agreement between ASEAN and India. And then I will pose some questions, some takeaways uh, on, on the subject. Mm -hmm. Not working. Mm -hmm. Right. Which one? Second one. Okay. Right. <laughs> 
Good. Uh, let me um, uh, uh, present with just an overview. You know, you, there are some statistics, some data. Uh, I don't want to uh, burden it, uh, burden you all with this uh, quantitative information. So the bottom line of this that ASEAN India services trade, uh, is compared to ASEAN China or ASEAN Japan, is not a big volume services trade, and it is very you know concentrated uh, only with Singapore. And again, with Singapore, uh, India has in services trade. Increment we call it SECA. In 2016, uh, services trade, total volume trade informally, again, these are not published data, so which we source from the RBI, it's about uh, 45 billion. And in the goods, we have a trade with ASEAN about an, uh, 81 billion. Uh, so almost a double than what we do in services. Uh, why this is so services trade low? Uh, I will come back when I, I, I go on. And yeah, India's major services partners are Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia. CLMB countries and Brunei yet to have uh, much services trade. Until we have many, you know, much uh, the voluminous trade in goods, you may not expect much services to follow. So, so, so this there is a gap. Uh, services India's exports are mainly rooted through modes one, two, mode three, one, three, and four. Uh, Trade in uh, services in mode two are very limited, and we have assigned the services trade agreement. And as I said, all the member countries are ratified, and it is the time for implementations. And this is certainly when once we implement, this is going to strengthen the trade and investment relations in Asia Pacific. Right. So you just a uh, just a quick look about that uh, you know strain line that we signed the uh, fta in the goods in 2010 and there are many questions raised that why india signed an fta and this is not very visible for india but you can see uh, that after signing the fta the rise of both total trade which is the first line which is very steep and if you see and uh, now that come back to uh, india's and asean services state profile India's uh, services is having services ex surplus in globally, so also in ASEAN. The blue one is the services export, and uh, the red one is the services import. Uh, India's total services trade is something around 600 billion. Sorry, bigger part, 340 billion, whereas the ASEAN's total services trade is coming about 640 billion, almost twice the India's services trade volume. And if you look at the compositions, there are little complementarities between them. Many places we overlap. Uh, jokingly, if you see this India's earning from IT and computer services, about 57 billion. Um, uh, so, sorry, it is about uh, telecommunication, computer, and information services. We have earned about 55 billion in 20, uh, 2017. It's actually wiped out by the transporters and services. If you see the India's import, about a 57 billion, which is more than India's earning from IT services from transportation. Basically, our air cargo, shipping cargo, all are taken by the foreign, foreign uh, cargo carriers. But if you come to the ASEAN, almost similar. So we need to find out where, is, where are the you know, gaps and how do we strengthen our services trade profile between them. Quickly, uh, India's, if you look at the commercial services trade, because services trade is a bit vague, it's a bit macro, but if you come to commercial services, India's strength lines in IT services, India's strength lines in, in IT-related enabled services, India imports almost huge amount of transportation services, but India is gaining market access in travel services. Uh, but what are the India's strengths and in, uh, inference in services trade? Indi, if you look at this, India's commitment in the GATS, but India committed more into the bilateral level. Because GATS commitments in WTO, and the bilateral commitments, there are some gaps. So in, we have seen the you know, bilateral, like India's services agreement with Japan, Korea, Singapore. The commitments are more than what India committed in, in the globally. Uh, and then some of the areas which we found there are India's strength, as I said, uh, computer and information services, and other business services. Other business services means health services, very uh, sophisticated services like Internet of Things, like that, and digital services which are uh, being, being discussed in the morning. Now, uh, India is relatively weak in transportation services, and there is a large persistent trade deficit in transportation. And India is improving the travel services. And we see that in the travel, both India and, and ASEAN, and also Asia-Pacific countries, there could be some collaborations and the cooperation in terms of the promotions. Uh, let me come to 
uh, the last slide, where we can do more, more um, uh, ASEAN-India partnership and services state. The table presents where we are doing. India is doing it, Singapore, Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia. It is all about Singapore-driven. It starts with the travel tourism and all the financial services, IT, health. But Vietnam, Cambodia, Laopedia are very limited. So, so this also give an opportunity, you know, if we need to diversify our services in the ASEAN markets, in both extensive intensive margins. So this is an opportunity because once you move with the goods, services will follow. So this is, uh, presently we have a goods trade only 80 billion. We aim for 200 billion by 2022. So, so most likely that services will be growing much faster as looking at this India's global services trade volume. Last part of my uh, presentation where I, I, I argue that, that even we have, what is India's interest and possible gains? India's interest would be, uh, when it comes to liberalizations, IT, IT enabled services, some of the sunrise uh, promising services, uh, sectors like education, health, where we yet to get, uh, you know, very strong uh, foothold in ASEAN market. So also ASEAN is coming to the India. But if you look at the services comparative advantage, reveal comparative advantage, ASEAN has in three sectors, um, transportation, tourism, and financial services. India is presently the two, which is information technology, other business services. So. So what I think that as quickly as possible, we, if we implement the services and investments agreement uh, in both the, in the regions, this might give you know, new opportunities to do more business. And the statistics which we have presently, it is a business as usual. So, so if we have new phase, of, new phase of trade in the services, what are the barriers, uh, the bottlenecks between them, if those are removed, we will see a new markets, new scenarios coming between India and ASEAN. But from India...